Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna be talking about modern architecture. Ah! <laughs> okay, all right. Today, we're gonna talk about the new MacBook Pro and the M1 processor and the M1 ecosystem. We're gonna talk about the design, the functionality. We're gonna compare the uh, M1 Air and M1 Pro software compatibility and whether it's worth the hype and the money and uh, how it compares to the rest of the industry. I'm basing my analysis on my personal experience with these two laptops and my personal workflow preferences uh, with a focus on architecture and the creative industry. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dami and I'm a licensed architect in beautiful Vancouver, BC. On this channel, we talk about architecture and design as well as the tools that can help us live more creative and productive lives. If you wanna check out some of my other videos, I also have videos on brutalist architecture or on the concept of experiential impoverishment. And I also have some videos on my architecture projects. Slick, powerful, nerdy, bulky laptops. Intel, AMD, Apple Silicon. The last couple of years have been really good for the computer industry. With so many different players, the market's become insanely saturated with new laptops from different brands and different price points. And like I've said before, a laptop is a tool after all. <laughs> That's why when we buy a new device, especially as architects or creative professionals, we should make our investment decision based on these two things. What type of work we do and how we like to do that work, AKA we have to make our decision based on our workflow. So I was given the MacBook Pro from Apple as a part of their professional uh, creative test program. And they basically let us use it with the goal of getting feedback so that it can help them improve the computer features and kind of help push the industry for further software optimization. This video is not sponsored by any brand, including Apple, and it's only just my personal opinions on it. So yeah, let's get into it. Apple moved away from Intel chips uh, that the Cupertino company has been using in Macs since 2006. The M1 is the first Apple designed system on a chip, SOC, that's been developed for use in Macs. SOC processors in Mac products, it's the first real innovation since the introduction of the x86 architecture, but ARM processors are not new. They're responsible for pushing the smartphone industry over the last decade because they're extremely good at solving two problems at the same time, power efficiency and performance. The M1 chip has a unified memory architecture that lets the CPU, GPU, and other processor components talk to each other seamlessly using the same data pool. This increases speed and power efficiency compared to having all of these components separated, uh, like in the traditional systems or the x86. All of these amazing features do have two minor hardware limitations. There's no support for external GPUs. And the other thing is that none of the components are upgradable, which isn't too much of a surprise since for the last two or three generation of Macs, they already had most of the components embedded in the motherboard. When you are about to purchase a MacBook, you do need to choose the amount of RAM beforehand and kind of be satisfied with that because that's the thing that you're gonna have to live with for a long time. But the biggest factor in determining whether these machines can or can't outperform the x86 counterparts is the software optimization. Cause it's only if the software is fully optimized to run natively on an M1 system that you can experience the full power of the system. I'll dig a little deeper into this a uh, little later in the video. So make sure you watch till the end. These MacBooks are definitely very well designed machines and their aesthetics actually didn't change that much in the past 10 years. 
This is my old 2012 MacBook Pro. By the way, still fully working, even after I poured beer on it, <laughs> smashed it on the ground, and even slept on it. And this is the new M1 Air. And this is the new MacBook Pro M1. Competition tried new designs, uh, multi-monitor configurations, hinges with rotating displays. You know, over the years, the designers at Apple, they spent most of their time smoothing out and perfecting the same design over and over again. At certain points, they were criticized for putting out the same looking products. And uh, of course that didn't really matter with their very loyal fan base. With the introduction of Apple Silicon, they finally made a pretty radical change to the thing that actually matters the most, the inside. So what's the main difference and which one would I choose now? <laughs> the M1 Air only has two Thunderbolt USB-C ports and one audio jack, and that's it. Considering you have to use one for power, unless you have a USB hub, you only have one available USB-C port. The Air still does have a really beautiful, bright, high-res 13-inch display, and it only weighs 2.8 pounds, which is perfect for me. The SoC consumes very little power, which allows a laptop to last more than 10 hours, even when you're watching a movie or using more power draining software. And since it's fanless, it's also completely silent. So no more awkward moments when you start a presentation. This is a great laptop if you're always on the move or if you don't really like carrying big things or if you have really small hands. It doesn't have a HDMI port, so you have to rely on the adapters if you need to use an external monitor. I actually made a dedicated video about the M1 Air. I'll leave the link to the video right here. If you are interested in buying an M1 Air, I think the USB-C hub is essential because it's gonna give you uh, all kinds of additional connectivity, like uh, USB 3.0 type A ports, an external output for monitors, SD card readers, ethernet ports, additional power delivery port. I actually currently own three different USB-C hub models that's connected to my permanent setup. So I'll leave the links to those in the description below. All right, so let's talk about the bigger brother, the new M1 Pro processor. Apple went back in time and they used a very similar port configuration of something like 10 years ago. MagSafe is back, so you don't need to sacrifice a USB-C port anymore for charging. By the way, uh, yes, you can also charge your laptop with the USB-C port if you want. It also has three Thunderbolt 4 ports and one SD card reader, which personally I appreciate a lot because I use my uh, Sony DSLR camera to shoot my videos. And these cards are still pretty common in the video and photo industries. It is significantly heavier, but also sturdier than the Air. And depending on what you're doing, the battery lasts uh, even longer, reaching up to 20 hours. The Pro model also has a fan, but even when it was running at high speed, it was one of the most silent machines I've ever experienced. The bigger 16 inch display has a wider color gamut and even higher resolution compared to the Air, with the only caveat being that it has a notch at the top. It also has a full HD camera with a wide aperture and computational image processing that works directly with Neural Engine. The speakers are awesome. And both models have a great comfortable keyboard and a fingerprint reader. Spec-wise, the M1 Air offers up to eight core CPU and eight GPU. The Pro model has up to 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU. And the M1 Max model has a maximum of 32 GPU cores and 64 gigabytes of unified memory. And both have dedicated hardware features for video encoding. I think the most important question is whether the M1 Air and M1 Pro are able to run software faster than their x86 counterparts. Probably the best answer to this is, depends on what you're doing. <laughs> when M1 launched uh, almost two years ago, 
Most of the software was still not optimized for this uh, new architecture. And Apple created the Rosetta app to convert uh, old legacy applications to run seamlessly with the new M1 format. But the real performance boost really happens when the software is fully optimized to run on the M1 technology. For example, in the video editing world, Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro, they all now have new versions to support SOC natively without using Rosetta. And this actually gives you pretty amazing results, especially for video encoding and real-time previewing. Like uh, when you're editing and skimming footage in a timeline, uh, even at really, really high resolutions. I use this M1 Pro for editing a documentary style video on my architectural thesis project, which I released a couple weeks ago. And this was all very high quality footage that we shot in Venice. And the, the editing was incredibly smooth and um, I could watch the footage in real time. And the rendering, um, the final export took less than three minutes. If you're interested in watching this video, I'll leave the link right here. It's a really interesting video. Also, I was able to edit an 8K H265 spherical video on Premiere Pro with the preview in full resolution with like camera projections applied onto it in real time. On an older system, I would have probably had to decrease the resolution to about a quarter to keep the editing relatively smooth. In a nutshell, to fully take advantage of the M1 processor, you really need to have a software that's optimized for the M1. When it comes to the architecture industry, which is already pretty heavily PC-based, uh, this is not always the case. Here's the list of software used in the industry that's compatible with either M1 or emulated via Rosetta. But this doesn't necessarily mean that the architecture software doesn't work or that it doesn't work well on an M1 computer. What I'm trying to say is that the performance of an M1 is not necessarily gonna outperform other x86-based systems of the same price range. And in fact, in some cases, the performance is gonna be good or just meet the average. And if you're looking for technical details or benchmarks, there's tons of other videos that you can find online. And I will not be doing that today. Archicad, SketchUp, Revit, Rhino, and lots of other industry standard software, they all rely on x86. And in a lot of cases, they're meant to run with dedicated GPUs. Revit, for example, which is of course the industry standard BIM modeling software, it was never released on Macs. To run it on an Apple system, you have to use it uh, on a virtual machine, um, like on a parallel or um, use an older MacBook, which uh, has like an Intel CPU with bootcamp. When the software is emulated, the level of performance is, is also dependent on the Rosetta app and, and the app's ability to translate the software onto the M1, which could also improve over time. In one of my previous videos, I did do a brief walkthrough of the different architectural softwares on the M1 Air. I haven't spent too much time playing around with the software on this computer yet, but let me know if you want me to do a similar walkthrough on the M1 Pro as well. If you're using a laptop for architecture and you just need to get things done quickly without worrying about compatibility, choosing a Windows-based laptop with either an Intel or AMD last generation processor with an accelerated GPU is probably your safest option in terms of architecture software compatibility. For example, AMD with Ryzen 9 59HX series and Intel with the new Core i7-11800H and Core i9-11980HK are finally providing pretty good alternatives in the x86 world at a pretty competitive price. There's also lots of laptop models out there using these chips. Personally, I still use my Dell laptop, which runs on an Intel processor for most of my professional architecture work. 
I almost use my M1 exclusively for digital imaging and video editing work. Um, I think for creative professionals and YouTubers, these are uh, incredible machines. I also recently got an iPad Pro M1 and I friggin' love using this for sketching and designing. And I've been experimenting with Procreate. And I think this is actually a game changer for architects. The tablet's also really great as an extension of my laptop because I can very easily import and export sketches uh, between the two. And I can also use my iPad as a second screen with Sidecar. I'll make a series of videos about sketching and Procreate. So uh, yeah, stay tuned. So it seems to me that the SOC is probably gonna be the new computational standard that Apple's gonna be implementing in all of their products with all of these new features packed into one single low power component. I wouldn't even be surprised if they came up with a new like standalone augmented reality goggle becoming a part of their ecosystem at some point. Like I mentioned before, where the M1 excels and pretty much destroys the competition is the power efficiency and the performance per watt. The power usage on these computers are so efficient that it makes working on site or working remotely a real breeze. For example, if I'm on a construction site all day, I can bring my laptop for like panning around the model or looking at drawings without worrying about power. And with the M2 coming soon, this is just gonna get better. If you're an architect and you use your laptop every day for work, as well as for your side projects, the answer is probably not just yet. If you're not able to fully take advantage of it, doesn't really seem like the best choice, especially nowadays uh, where you can get a really good Intel or AMD alternative at almost half the price. But as soon as companies like Autodesk or Graphisoft or Vectorworks start making fully optimized versions of their software to run on the M1, this is gonna change really, really fast. Based on my personal experience so far, the M1 is a great companion laptop where I can do all of my other creative work. I use Adobe Creative Cloud on it and I basically run my full video production studio on this little computer. I, I know it is a bit of luxury, but I love having the ability to keep my daily work and my creative work on two separate systems so that I can avoid idle time and I can even run renderings while I'm making videos on my M1. I know that a lot of you viewers are students and I know lots of you have been asking me about whether you should buy a MacBook or not and I think I know what you want to hear <laughs> but I do think that for anyone just starting their architecture journey you should buy a machine that can run all of the software without any problems. As a young architect, your usage of software is gonna be your superpower. I think it's really important for you to be able to learn different programs because in a lot of cases um, for that entry level position, knowing Revit or knowing AutoCAD or whatever the software is, that is gonna be the difference between you getting hired and not getting hired. Also, you're probably gonna have a bit of a tighter budget. Uh, so getting an Intel or AMD based laptop will save you money and time, especially if you're planning to keep your laptop running on a power supply most of the time and uh, portability is not really your priority. There's a lot of gaming laptops <laughs> that don't look as great, <laughs> that but have excellent rendering performance and powerful GPU. The only downside is that they're not as slick and uh, they can be really, really noisy when the CPU is getting stressed. Feel free guys to nerd me out with your best architecture laptop configurations. I had a chance to use an Asus ROG with the Ryzen 4800H and it was kind of like being next to an airplane when I was doing video renderings, but uh, definitely it got the job done. 
for now, I think the M1 Pro is an amazing machine, but uh, mainly focused on high-end creative professionals. And that's, I think, where it excels the most. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video was helpful. And let me know if you want me to make a dedicated video where I test out all of the standard software on this machine. Let me know if you like this video and if you want me to make more in-depth reviews of laptops. If you wanna check out my review of the M1 Air, I will leave it right here. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you wanna get notified when I release a new video. And uh, if you have any suggestions about what laptop or software I should try to make a video about next, leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.